welcome back to another video. I am so excited for today's video because I get to do my favorite thing ever, and that's mood read. I love mood reading so much. I have a lot of books that I wanna read right now, especially books that I have acquired over the past few months. I honestly have no idea how long I'm gonna film this for. I don't know, we could go like four or five books deep, I don't know. The first one that I actually wanna start off with is called Expiration Date. This is by the same author who wrote In Five Years and One Italian Summer. Both of these books have caught my attention every single time I see them at the store and for some reason, I've just never picked them up. I think because they may be more general fiction, but I don't know. I haven't really looked into it, so I could be wrong. It could just be romance. This cover stopped me in my tracks. It is absolutely beautiful. What I know about it so far is the main character, every time she gets into a relationship, or it might be right before she gets into a relationship, she gets these random slips of paper, and they will have the guy's name on it, and a date and that date is when they break up that's how long they'll be dating for by me <laughs> until one night she goes on a blind date but there's no expiration date there's no date and so she's thinking is this the one of course after that their whole story unfolds and i am very excited to read this i actually didn't realize it's kind of a shorter story which is going to be fun. Um, it's 254 pages, so this is the first one we're going to be starting with, and let's just hop right into it. Expiration Dates by Rebecca Searle. Wow, this was my first book by her. I absolutely loved it. The main character, her name is Daphne, and the setting is in LA. So it's really cool because it feels like the author is walking you through all of these hot spots in LA. Daphne has always wanted the happy ending. But before every relationship she gets in, she ends up getting a slip of paper that says the guy's name and how long they'll be dating for. Ah, uh, seeing all of her relationships and going through them with her. There were some relationships that I was just rooting for, they absolutely loved, and then you find out why they break up and it makes you actually feel the pain with her. There are other relationships where you're like, oh wow, that guy is like scummy. I actually liked the main character. I loved her wittiness. The banter was always so good, no matter who she was talking to. I really enjoyed how there was magical realism in this romance book. This one just really tugs at your heartstrings and just seeing how Daphne 
has to come to this conclusion that she basically needs to start over and how she gets there is just such a journey you go on all of it with her i want to give it a really high rating but just because we didn't get as much time with the characters as i wanted i feel like i was just starting to really absolutely love some of the characters i might do like a 4.25 time to go grab our next read it's the next day i have my next read that The next book I'm going to be reading is Lovely War. You guys, I'm so excited to be reading this. I actually saw this at Barnes & Noble and the cover is what really intrigued me. And that's why I ended up picking it up because Lovely War, I don't know, it just sounds really good. It was in the young adult section. I'm gonna read this to you really quickly. It says, in the perilous days of World Wars one and two, the gods held the fates in the hearts of four mortals in their hands. Hazel, James, Aubrey, and Colette, a classical pianist from London, a British would-be architect turned soldier, a Harlem born ragtime genius in the US Army, and a Belgian orphan with a, with a gorgeous voice and a devastating past. Their story as told by God Goddess Aphrodite, who must spin the tail or face judgment on Mount Olympus, is filled with hope and heartbreak, prejudice and passion, and reveals that the war is a formidable force. It's no match for the transcendent power of love. There are lots of different things going on here. It sounds like historical fiction with a mix of Greek mythology. Hopefully I end up loving it. I'm only like 18 pages in. Let me just say, wow. I don't know that much about Greek mythology, so I just brushed up a little bit, literally like no, not much research at all. I just looked up who Aphrodite is and a couple other people, um, but you really don't have to do that because it tells you what they're the god or goddess of. Let's continue on with Lovely War. updated you guys in a bit it is sunday and ian and i just got out of church we went to go get an early afternoon matcha just got home we have a couple of hours until we need to go to bible study um but i just figured it would be a really good time to finally update you guys on the book lovely war i am about halfway it is so good it's very heavy there's actually a line in this book that i felt resonated with me i don't know if i could find it but basically one of the characters is talking to another character and she says where she's from she was a part of something that happened in this place and the other character was like oh kind of shocked and then the other character responds with something like oh did you not think that was real just because it didn't happen to you essentially but not in the way that i'm making it sound it wasn't like rude or condescending or anything like that but it's crazy how traumatic things like that are just horrible horrible things it's hard for us to grasp or maybe that was just me but i feel like i really resonated with that because you do think wow that really did happen and this although it is fiction it brings all that to light and it makes some of this feel so much more personal it's like wow these things happened to a lot of these people like in one of the horrible incidents that happened at the beginning of world war one there were like 6,500 civilians that were killed and they were killed in awful, 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 disgusting ways. Wow, it just brings that all to light, you know? So I would say this is definitely a heavier book, but it's still young adult. You're reading about World War I, one and two, so it's not easy to digest in any means. This concept is unreal, you guys. It is so cool how she uses Aphrodite and Ares and Apollo and Hades and these gods and goddesses in Greek mythology to basically tell this story. 
I, I'm just mind blown. I'm mind blown. I'm hoping that I can finish it like today or tomorrow. I'm kind of taking my time with it. I've been reading it for a few days and I'm so happy I've I've been doing that. So I'm going to do a little bit of reading before we go to Bible study. I don't know. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get done. Let's get reading, shall we? Cheers. Oh, okay. I'm back to you. officially one week later since I started this video and I have finished lovely war if I had to sell you guys on this book because you know if you follow me on Instagram I finished this last night and I immediately took a photo I stayed up late like way past when I usually go to bed just to finish this book because it was so good and I needed to know what happened I could not rest unless I finished it opening scene it starts out with Aphrodite and she is the goddess of love. I know I've talked about this a little bit, but she is with her lover Ares. Ares and Aphrodite get caught by Aphrodite's husband who is the god of like fire forging. And so now they are tied up and he's upset with his wife Aphrodite because she's not being faithful and loyal to him. She's having this affair with his brother. So just throw that in the mix. So he's upset about this and she, basically start sharing how she is this goddess of love, but she's not really capable of being loved. And so she starts telling this beautiful love story from World War One, And she kind of talks about how, although she's a goddess, she wishes she was a mortal because of the love that mortals have for each other. She tells this story to her husband and to Ares, but she also has some other gods come in to tell their side of the story as well. So there's Apollo that chimes in and Hades chimes in, which Hades is the god of the underworld in Greek mythology. So anytime I would see his chapter, my heart would drop because I'm like, who died? I am just so impressed at how Julie Berry told this story. This is considered a historical romance. So for me, this was perfect because I got to learn a lot about World War I, but also there's this beautiful love story that is playing out and it's so good. Oh my gosh. And one thing I love about this author is I felt like she did not shy away from really difficult topics. And this focuses mainly on the British soldiers and then an American soldier as well when America comes over to join forces and help fight against the Germans. So that was really cool to read about. And just like the conditions these men had to go through during the war. I read All Quiet on the Western Front, which is actually one of my favorite books. I love that book, but it is, that is a super heavy read. I would say it was way heavier than Lovely War. Lovely War, um, it, I mean, the main focus is the romance, but then there's all the other stuff going on. So that's why it's considered historical romance. Unlike All Quiet on the Western Front, that is just a really heavy book. I, I cried with this one, but I sat in the car and just sobbed when I read All Quiet on the Western Front. So from that book, it's interesting because it's being told from a German's point of view in the war. And then in this book, it's being told on the British side of things. One thing that I really, really appreciated is the author flips it on you. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but... Let me just say she kind of flips the narrative, shows that the soldiers on both sides, the Western Front and the Eastern Front, these men have families, they have wives, they have children, they have mothers and fathers that love them. A lot of them don't want to be doing this as well. And I was really happy she did that because just shows the humanity. I was listening to Marjorie while reading it and that just really amplified all of the emotions. And then after I read it, I just laid in bed. I could not go to sleep because 
I kept thinking about this story and I'm so sad that there's, this is it. Like I want more. I really, really want more. I am no history buff whatsoever, so I am just trying my best here, but this was amazing. I want to give it a five stars. There were parts through like the middle that got a little bit slow for me, but I mean, other than that, like it was, it was so good. I loved it. I have no complaints. Honestly, I might give it five stars. I am going to end the video off here. I was planning on reading at least one other book, but that's totally fine. If you guys like it, I will do another one of these videos. This was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Oh,